up guys, something a little bit different this morning out in the boat today, as you can see on my own, so up at Logan Lee really nice place, up in hills so, let's see what we got cheers so, this was me up at Logan Lee as I say, and yeah great little place to fish um, can be a bit wild when the, when the weather's not right, but on a day like today it was beautiful beautiful conditions and yeah happy to be out in the water and unfortunately the day before i hadn't been feeling great and i basically we just went to my bed it wasn't until i was out fishing this day i realized i hadn't charged up my gopro battery um, so yeah didn't get the full footage of the day which is a shame i've been wanting to do a video up at logan lee for a while but i did get some footage um and I'll share that with you at the end of the video along with some other footage of a, another short session where I went out um, and picked up quite a few fish so yeah I can only really film in a GoPro in a boat um, and yeah as I say it's a bit of a shame but I'll definitely do a, vid a full video up here in the near future so I'd been reading through the comments on my videos and there was definitely a common theme um, where people were wanting help with tying droppers, tying up casts, having problems with getting tangles or problems with the droppers just twizzling around their main fluorocarbon um, line. And yeah, so today's video, I just thought I would cover a bit of that, show you what I do and hopefully some tips for you to help with that. Now, regards to getting in tangles, obviously that can just be down to practicing your casting, but um, one definite thing to do is just use the one dropper to start with and increase the strength of your fluorocarbon, use a stiffer brand. You don't want to be using the Seagar Soft Plus for example. Um, go for a stiffer fluorocarbon to begin with and it's less likely to get in tangles. So when you're actually tying up your cast, um, what I've got here is I've, I'm using 10 pound fluorocarbon, just run a black marker through it so you can see it better. Um, so I'd measure up where I want my dropper, so if I was having one dropper I tend to have 15 foot and I would tie the dropper on at 7.5 foot. So just measure up 7.5 foot, get your dropper which will be about 8 to 10 inches to give you plenty, plenty line to have a tag end. Put your dropper parallel form a, a loop just pinch that loop with your fingers and then bring both the dropper and the line up and then just pull them through the loop now you repeat that another twice so you're doing three turns and that's the three turn surgeon that always what i use when i'm tying up my droppers never use tippet rings or anything and Generally, I, I don't think I've been broken off at the dropper. Um, it tends to be if you get a knot in your line from the wind or something like that. Now, obviously, you would moisten the knot before tightening it down. I'm not doing that because I just get black marker all over me. Um, and once you've bedded that down, just pull your dropper, tighten that up, and then pull the tag end. So the tag end there is the one you want to cut off. The dropper is always the part facing the point of your line where you would tie on your point fly. So I can just snip that off and then that's me got my dropper. Next what I'm going to do is just include an additional turn. Now this is optional. It probably will give you slightly less strength but I've never been broken off when doing this. So as you can see there Take your dropper around the back and then back through the loop just like you're putting an overhand knot in. Pull it tight and you will find that that will make your dropper stand at 90 degrees. This does help to stop it twizzling around. Um, and yeah, good little tip that. Just makes it stand a bit proud. So next I'm going to go up to the, the part of the line which I would tie on to my to my fly line and uh, what I always do is I'll just put a perfection loop in so you see there form a loop around the back pinch it with your fingers and you can see the line behind there 
very important that you take this end, put it round the back of that to form another loop, pull it through, then with this tag end you are putting it between the two loops, line it down and then go through the back loop and pull this loop through. As you can see there, forms a nice loop. Now you know if the perfection loops worked because the tag end will be standing at 90 degrees. If it's not, you've not done it right, try again. But yeah, this is how I always have it so I can tie up my rigs and put them on um, the foam rigs that I use. So if I go back down, got my dropper there, and then go down to the point where I would tie on my point fly. And what I'm going to do here is tie on a nice little damsel. Now I like to tie on my damsels with a non-slip loop knot or a rapala knot. Um, just lets the fly have a little bit more movement. And so to do that, you're just forming as though you were going to tie a knot in your line. So you've got a little loop there. You'll then get your damsel and put that through the eye of the hook. Then put the end back through the loop, the, the loop that you formed in the line. You can adjust the size you want the loop and slide it down a bit. Once you're happy, you can just pinch that circle and tie your normal five turns that you would do if you're tying your blood knot. I'm just going to do three here. You're then putting that end back through the center. Pinch the tag end with your fingers and then moisten it. I'm not going to do it again because I'll get covered in marker. And then pull that tight. Very important that you pull it tight slowly. Um, same when you're tying any knot. Um, just to stop it getting too much friction, even though you moisten it, you should still pull it slowly tight. I find that people that get broken off with their flies a lot, they tend to really pull their knots tight really quickly, and that can just weaken it. But you can see there, there's the non-slip loop knot, and it just lets that damsel have lots of movement when it's getting retrieved through the water. What I tend to do is make up several casts and tie them onto foam rigs and that's why I put a perfection loop in the end so then I can just once I've put the point fly on first attach it to the foam rig I can wind it all on I've got the perfection loop there that I can just put in the pin and attach to my foam rig and that way it's ready for when I want to use it I can just take off the pin snip off the perfection loop and then I just tie the fluorocarbon onto my fly line just using a five turn blood knot. Obviously loop to loop connections are most popular but you can't do that if you've got your flies already attached. I've never had any problems um, attaching my fluorocarbon to my fly line just using the same knot as you would tie on a fly. Um, just again moisten it, tighten it nice and slowly and yeah I've never ever been snapped off. So it just makes it easier if you want to change up what you're using you can take one off just wind it back on your rig so if you're going from say fishing two flies and you want to go into a washing line you can just take it off wind it on the rig take a new one off attach it in like two minutes saves a lot of time you don't want to be sitting making up casts at the side of the water it just takes far too long especially when i'm filming i do lose a bit of time so you can see here got some boobies there on different lengths couple of bungs with some buzzers and some caddis it just helps to have these pre-prepared just again saves a lot of time and then w once you use them or if the line gets a bit knackered you can just then replace them and just have a little supply in your bag so some dry flies there my old favorite uh, the two clink hammers and yeah little emerging caddis and a, a muddler got here as well a couple of two fly setups so damsels cat whiskers with little naturals on the dropper 
again, it's, you can attach them it's, and then change one fly really quickly if you want to. Um, just saves time tying up extra casts when you're actually out of the water. Little copper sparkler there, which really does the damage. Another little damsel and snatcher there. And then finally, I'll always have some washing line setups ready to go. So there's a little hair's ear booby on the point there. With some naturals, little foam shrimp, some crunchers, and a fab with some, well, a cruncher and a DL bath. So yeah, I just find if I keep these topped up, I have different varieties in my bag, I can change what I'm fishing really quickly. And again, I guess for beginners, if you just take the time to make these up in advance, if you do get in a tangle, you can simply take it off, tie on a new one, and within two minutes you'll be fishing again, rather than getting frustrated that you've got in a tangle and having to tie up new casts. I mean, it happens. It happens to everyone, especially in the wind. Um, that way you've got another one ready to go, and you'll not be as frustrated, and you'll be back fishing within two minutes. So hopefully that helped a bit. Um, if there's any further questions, you just drop me a note. I'm happy to try and answer anything. But that's what I do anyway when I'm tying up casts and how I prepare for my day's fishing. So back up at Logan Lee here. And yeah, it was a tough day and a lot of anglers were really struggling. Now the water had been crystal clear and it had torrential rain, which coloured up the water, which made it quite challenging. And... Different people were using different tactics. A lot of people were using big bright lures to try and stand out in the water. Um, I was here on the dry fly. Um, there was a few fish rising at this spot and they were taking tiny little brown insects from the surface. So on went the Midas. And after a, a few attempts at trying to get the, the dry fly to drift over this fish, um, yeah, I managed to hook into it. So that was my first fish of the day and it was great, it was quite a, quite a few hours before I managed to get one um, and it's always great to then hook into one um, especially on the dry fly um, yeah, Midas does it again So first fish in the net and a great feeling after all the effort and trying different things, always good to get your first fish. So as I said before, the water was really coloured, like a chocolatey brown. Um, and yeah, the tactics I went for was I was still staying small and natural, um, but I was changing onto a washing line because um, they weren't they weren't deep at all the fish. Um, I could obviously got one on the dry fly. Could see the occasional fish moving. So what I used as my tactic was going on the washing line with some black crunchers. Now only size twelves and fourteens, um, which you'd be surprised still how much because they're black they stand out in the water. That's always my tactic when it's coloured water is going black um, and the key is to try and not retrieve your flies too quickly if the water's coloured you need to give the fish a chance to see your fly so using black stands out by retrieving it slowly it means if the fish sees it it's not going to disappear as soon as they see it if you're stripping it back they'll see it and then it'll be gone again so I think that's a bit of a problem with the people that were fishing lures retrieving them quite quickly and yeah the fish hasn't got really a chance to see it so it was a tough day, I managed to get three fish, 
and after speaking to the owner, um, it seems the best anyone had done up until that point was getting one fish. So a challenging day, but still enjoyable. Um, finding what worked, and yeah, that would be my tip. If you're fishing coloured water, black flies. Don't retrieve too quickly. Give them a chance to see it, and yeah, that'll definitely increase your catch rate. So on to a different session, and I went up to my local water, Roslyn Lee. Um, and the main purpose of this session was to try out some new flies that I'd been tying. So I tied up some new blue flash damsels and was really keen to give them a go and see how they perform. And yeah, it was a beautiful day when I first went up, as you can see. Um, but then the weather really turned sour. Um, the wind picked up, which meant I couldn't have my tripod up. And then it started absolutely lashing it down with rain. So I still managed to rescue some footage from it. Um, but yeah, the, my health and the weather's been a bit against me, but I'll be out soon again and hopefully can bring you a full fishing video. But um, yeah, the blue flash damsels really seem to do well, so I'll definitely be tying up quite a lot of those patterns. Um, and yeah, you can see here, hook into a fish and yeah, the fly gets its first blood on its first outing, which is always a good sign. So. Hope you enjoyed this video guys and um, I'll see you again soon. Cheers.